Hello guys, welcome back. And in today's chapter, we are going to learn about the thermal energy or heat energy. So any hot object actually has thermal or heat energy stored inside it. And thermal energy is always transferred from a place of um, high temperature to a low temperature okay so it always goes from the hotter place to the colder place okay so the heat transfer will always happen from a warmer object and lose it to the cooler object so the absolute zero temperature is a term that we really need to be familiar with in this chapter so let's take a look at this step by step so we have three scales of temperature, which is um, Kelvin, Celsius, and Fahrenheit. And when we say the lowest possible temperature, it is zero degree on Kelvin scale, negative 273 on Celsius, and negative 459 on Fahrenheit. So you should know that it's not always zero, because if we say zero degrees Celsius, it's actually not the absolute zero temperature. Or if we say that it's zero degree Fahrenheit, it's not actually absolute zero temperature either. It has to be zero on Kelvin. And these two equations will be very useful for you to remember because in exams, um, they might ask you to convert temperature or they might ask you to give different temperature scales. And you need to be able to convert from one to the other. Now, at the absolute zero temperature, okay, let's take a look at the behavior of the molecules inside. The molecules don't have any kinetic energy because at absolute zero temperature, which is at zero, right, they don't have any energy because they're not moving, okay? So, they don't have energy, so they stop moving. They stop moving because they don't have energy. It's the same concept. But... If it is even slightly higher than zero Kelvin, right, the atoms will start to move and vibrate all the time and they will start to have um, kinetic energy. So you should know what is the absolute zero temperature on Kelvin scale, on Celsius scale and on Fahrenheit scale. And if it's difficult for you, you should remember this following two conversions so that you can do it very easily. So thermal energy can be transferred in mainly three ways, which is conduction, convection, and radiation. So we will talk about the details now. So thermal conduction, it's actually the transfer of heat, okay, through a substance by the vibration of atoms within the substance, okay? So the vibration of the atoms mean that the atoms inside here will vibrate However, the entire substance itself will not be moving, okay? So, the thermal conduction will take place mainly in solids. <clears throat> if we have a plastic spoon and a metal spoon, the metal spoon is going to become hotter because why? It is a good thermal conductor and heat will be lost to the environment, okay? Through this metal spoon. But plastic spoon is a very poor thermal conductor, but we should know that the spoon itself is, doesn't need to move for thermal conduction to take place. It is actually the vibration of the atoms inside. Now, convection or convection current is actually the transfer of heat through fluids. You should know that this is true only for fluids, which include both liquids and gases, by the upward movement of warmer, less dense regions of the fluid we will get to it in a minute but if i explain it in very simple terms if we apply heat here the particles near the heat source will gain so much energy so when they gain energy they are going to start to spread away from each other and when they spread away it means that the lower part of the liquid because they are spreading away right they have lower density now and the water above which is the colder regions of this fluid has actually high density so that is why you can relate that if something is hot liquid or hot fluid particles it has low density and if it has high density it's actually cold 
and this is the explanation that you will be using a lot in liquid or gas related um, physics problems so as usual if we have a low density and a high density fluid we know that the low density fluid will be above the example is the wow being above water in the similar way the particles the warm hot and lower density particles will go upwards while the cold cooler cold high density particles will drop down and these particles will gain heat energy once more and rise again so that is called the convection current or the convection cycle all right so let's try to take a look at this um, gif here as well okay when the particles gain heat energy they spread away loses their density and they will move upwards and at the same time the colder particles will start to drop down as you can see here and as they drop nearer to the heat source they will become hot again and then rise so that is what we call the convection current okay so for fluid particles so how do you explain that is that the fluid particles which are near the heat source they are going to gain heat energy and they will start to move around and push each other so they become less dense and then rises the cooler which are the blue particles they are denser so they will fall down and this will form a convection current and that is how fluids liquids or gases are heated all the time now radiation thermal radiation is the transfer of heat by infrared waves which you have learned in the properties of waves chapter thermal radiation is also called heat radiation or infrared radiation and it is made purely of electromagnetic waves which has different frequency ranges as you have learned before so what i want to mention here is that all of the objects around us including refrigerator your car your laptop your body your pencil everything around us are emitting and absorbing heat radiation all the time but the difference is that if we have a very hot object such as fire on a piece of um, woods in campfire they will emit more radiation than they absorb from the surroundings okay so they will be emitting more however a cooler object such as a metal um, chair or a refrigerator they will be absorbing more heat radiation than it emits to the surroundings for example if we use a an infrared thermometer right the, if we look at a car the this bonnet area of the car will be very hot because why it's emitting radiation so that's why if you hover your hand over it i'm not saying put your hand on the bonnet here even if you put your hand around um, let's say slightly above the bonnet you will still feel heat because why the car is the hotter object and it's emitting radiation energy efficient houses the energy that we use in our houses um, homes or schools walk is super expensive okay um, because heating is the main use of energy everywhere we use it to light our houses and we use it to keep ourselves warm by heating the warmth and if we do hot showers we are also trying to get the warmth the heat energy okay so that is why heating is always the main use of energy everywhere and that the energy that we have to pay for it is expensive and we'll get to it in a minute now heat is expensive because we obtain it from burning fuels like coal oil or natural gas but why is it important to us as humans because when we use coal oil or, or gas since they are organic compounds they produce carbon dioxide gas which is a greenhouse gas which causes global warming as well that's why if we use our energy such as not turning off refrigerator or aircon when we go out the energy will be wasted and that wasted energy will contribute to global warming and that's why it becomes important that the energy we use in our homes is not wasted or lost at all in winter or european countries 
and in very cold weathers when we turn on the central heating system at our home so they usually have a we usually have a central heating system like this at our ground level or inside our storage so we have it because we, uh, we want to warm the house but the thing is think about it we want our heat to be inside the house actually the heat should be inside the house but if the heat is unnecessarily lost to the environment the house will not be warm at all okay so the houses or structures of houses which is able to keep the heat inside the house is what we call energy efficient houses so energy efficiency means that you're using as much possible of the energy you produce for the desired purpose for example if you turn on the central um, heating system right it's because you want to keep the inside of the house warm it's not because you want to keep the trees here warm or the air around here warm it's actually because you want to keep the insides of your house warm so let's take a look at this what is the key to energy efficient houses proper insulations we have to reduce the rate at which the energy is transferred between the inside and outside of the house okay so if this house is properly insulated meaning that the heat won't be able to go outside a lot but if it is not properly insulated the heat will be going outside by conduction convection or radiation so whatever new technology that we have it's always come back to proper insulation all these new technologies are there to help us have proper insulation now how is energy heat energy lost from a house It's actually through the windows the walls the doors and the floor and we will see all the roofs as well so we will try to see what methods can we actually use to prevent as much as possible now for walls and roofs heat is actually lost by conduction through the walls for example if we have a wall here if this is only one layer it is in contact it is solid so we are going to lose heat by ways of conduction but how do we prevent it is by using two layered wall construction okay and we have a gap between these two walls which is going to help us trap air and this is going to reduce our heat loss by conduction convection or radiation because why the air is a very poor thermal conductor and it is also a good insulator that's why we want a layer of air so that if we have heat conducting right it will be stopped here it will not be going over to that side because air is a very poor thermal conductor this is the inside of a house all right so another way another thing that we need to think about walls is their strength their durability and their pricing as well but if we want a better solution than air okay just air as our um, thermal uh, insulator we need to start using glass fiber so glass fiber actually looks like these pieces of metal uh, these pieces of um, fiber inside houses at cold places okay so glass fiber is a very lightweight and poor conductor which is covered with aluminum foil i'll get to why we use aluminum foil it's because when we have heat coming from the inside of a house this will go to the wall by conduction but once it reaches this uh, glass fiber which is covered with aluminum foil it's going to reflect back because why aluminum foil is a very reflective surface the similar to the kinds that you see when you are barbecuing your fish okay so that is how heat um, conduction can be um, prevented or insulated inside walls and inside roofs which is what have a gap between two layers and insert air or glass fiber which is laced with aluminium because why it is reflective and reflect the heat back into the house 
and air is what? It's a very poor thermal conductor. So for windows, similar to our roofs and walls, we will use two layers of glass. Glass is already a very poor thermal conductor, but it is used in very thin layers. That's why heat can readily go in or go out. So that's why to improve insulating properties, we will use two layers of glass to trap air inside here. So the one thing that you should notice is that the thickness of the glass layers is also very important because if it is too thin, insulation will be reduced and if it is too thick, the convection currents will be able to circulate and bring heat from one surface to another. Now, the summary for energy efficient houses is that the parts of the house must be properly insulated to prevent heat loss by conduction, convection, or radiation. How do we do it? We do it <clears throat> by using fiberglass panels or use two glasses, two walls, two roofs, and trap a thick layer of air. It can be air or it can be fiberglass. So that will prevent circulation of convection current. And for the fiberglass, there should be an aluminum foil, which will re reduce the radiation heat loss. Now, some of the modern technology <clears throat> that is being used is thermostat or computer control systems which can actually monitor the temperature around our house and modify it in whatever way that we want. Insulating people. So, this clothes can help us in both ways. For a firefighter, we want to reduce heat from getting to our bodies. That's why you will see firefighters wearing a very reflective jacket because when heat is coming from the outside, such as flames, right, we want it to reflect back. They will be reflected back, okay? That is why firefighters always have reflective shiny jackets. But for <clears throat> cold winter areas, we want to wear clothes because on clothes, we're going to trap air. And that trapped air is a very poor thermal conductor, meaning that the trapped air cannot circulate. And it's a very poor thermal conductor, meaning that whatever heat is coming to us is going to be sticked on us, okay? They cannot circulate back into the air. And that's how we keep ourselves warm. So clothes can help in both ways. Now humans can lose heat from our body in different ways and we should know about it. For example, evaporation happens when our body loses water, okay? And respiration is the heat loss because we're trying to inhale and exhale um, colder air. Conduction happens, let's say, when you are a runner running, right? Conduction happens because as you are stepping onto the ground, right? You're transferring energy into the ground in terms of heat. Now, convection happens when you have exposed skin, okay? And radiation happens on from your exposed skin as well. So you should know how heat is um, rapidly lost from our body, and that's why we need to eat, rest, in order to regain our energy. Now, when people lose body heat quickly, they become hypothermic, which is um, this one, okay? You might have seen it in um, movies where <clears throat> the mountain rangers will often wrap a layer of thick blanket around the victims or around the survivors because why? Their body temperature is dropping very dangerously and they want to reduce it. How it is done is by using hypothermia blankets as you see here, okay? So if you're a person, right, if this is your hand and you have a hypothermia wrap around you, meaning that the body heat that you are losing will be reflected back into your body and that's how you keep yourself warm, okay? So the interior reflective surface reflects the heat back to our bodies while the outer reflective surface is a very poor radiator of heat.
and that is why you will often see uh, marathon runners being covered in blankets at the end of the race it is to keep themselves warm because they have just run a marathon so they have lost a lot of energy and that's why they want to keep the heat energy inside for animals the penguins they keep warm by moving or huddling close together so different animals have different methods okay so penguins are decreasing their surface area to volume ratio by sticking together so the lower the ratio the lesser the heat loss and for the birds they keep warm, they keep themselves warm by fluffing their fluffing their feathers sorry for my typo here okay so what happens is that when they fluff their um, feathers okay let's say if they have feathers and they fluff it the heat will be trapped inside the air will be trapped inside here okay and this trapped air will help reduce heat loss by um, conduction convection okay or radiation so that is why you will often see birds in cold places um, such as owls fluffing their um, feathers to keep themselves warm all right so just for our one last final topic i'm going to discuss on which surface radiates heat better okay so this experiment was done by using a filament bulb and then i'm going to paint half of the light bulb completely black and then turn on the light bulb okay so imagine in your mind that this half is completely black completely black so since this is completely black it it becomes what it becomes a very very poor reflector okay because for example your black um, phone your black shirt they can't reflect anything okay so it becomes a very poor reflector but what we notice is that when we turn on the light bulb and then we record the thermo we record with a thermometer on each side what we notice is that there is going to be heat energy of course you know from your light bulb what we notice very much is that um, the thermometer on the right side okay which is facing the black part of the bell the temperature rises very high while the uncovered part okay raise rises only a little okay but then you should also know here that since this is a very bright area it is going to be a very good reflector but since it didn't um, get as much temperature as one on the black side it becomes a poor radiator and the black surface is actually a very very good radiator of heat okay so that's what you should know about which surface radiates heat better the black surface radiates heat better in this way but it is a poor reflector so know that good radiators are always poor reflectors of infrared radiation all right so that is all for today i'm sorry the video was a bit longer than usual and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye